So what's wrong with the refactorization? P plus two and P minus two? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two and the same? He's, he's saying this doesn't work either because two times negative two would be negative four. doesn't, um, about if we say it doesn't multiply out, does that make sense? If you multiply it out, it doesn't make the correct expression. It kind of answers the second question, doesn't it? How could she have checked to make sure that, to see if her answer was correct? and you find out that you don't get the same expression which you don't, well, you know that what you did wasn't correct, okay? But even more than that, so distributed, even more than that, what is the correct answer? It cannot be factored. There's not that many ways to factor four. Two and two is one of them. Four and one's the other one. Neither one of those adds up to two. Uh, if we use 2 and 2, we get p squared plus 4p plus 4. If we use 4 and 1, we get p squared plus 5p plus 4. And neither one of these work. Okay, so, uh, not factorable. <coughs> this is the next one. Uh, so Rick is trying to factor this, he does it correctly. But why is it, why does Rick rewrite the expression with a zero B? Why don't you write a little response to that? I'll get you those, uh, those printouts. Try to be a little quicker on those. Two, three, Okay, so how come? Why did they put a zero B there? Pilot? So you get 
take uh, uh, two, uh, two people and still not and, and don't mess up anything. Yeah. Get to B. Yeah. What do you need? Like uh, you mean two T O or T W O? T W O. Two B. You mean this? Yeah. B squared. Yeah. Okay. So you can get B squared and not mess anything else up. Is that what you said? Yeah. Like uh, minus and E one. Okay. So you're just kind of showing it for what it is that when he finds the two numbers he's looking for, that they would have to add together to make a zero for B. Yeah. Just kind of, it, it was that already, right? He hasn't messed anything up. That he hasn't changed it. He's just put in a B term that has a correct uh, coefficient. So it's a C or show maybe that the two numbers add to zero. And I, I, I bring this to your attention because a lot of times students will see b squared minus 81 or, or something like that and say, how do I do that? Right? There's no b term. There is a b term. It just has a zero. So the two numbers that we find have to So you might notice something about the two kind, the two factors that you get uh, as a result. So think about that for a second. See if you can come up with three other examples, just like this, with a zero b or zero x or whatever variable you want to use, that also factor just like this. Okay? They have no b term. There's a zero b or zero x or whatever, but they still factor out to something. See if you can come up with three examples. Most of what I saw, people were recognizing the pattern that, uh, that we want to respect. Uh, so I'll just say, let's say we did x squared minus, what kind of a number do we have to have right here? Again? Yes. Perfect square. Perfect square. Yeah, perfect square. Maybe you, maybe you get that, maybe you don't. So let's talk about it. Uh, why does it have to be a perfect square? Why can't it be some other number? Because it thinks you're subtracting it and that way we'll get a Right, the only way to get the zero B is to get 10 minus 10, five minus five, six minus six, they have to be exact opposites, right? When you take those two exact opposites and you multiply them together, well, you're gonna have the same number times itself, so that's gonna be a perfect square. It'll be a ne negative perfect square, but it'll be a perfect square. So this one would be X plus 10, X minus 10. What's another example? 64. 64 will work, that'd be X plus eight times X minus eight. Another one, the last one. 49. 49, x plus 7, x minus 7. All right. So, for that reason, um, that we have, well, let me write this. This is called a difference. Uh, what does that mean to say difference of? That, what does difference mean? Subtraction. Subtraction. We're subtracting, so it's a difference. Difference of two kinds, two numbers, two numbers, two square numbers. Not only does this have to be a square, I might have, you know, just kind of didn't even notice it, but this would have to be a square too. Because it 
also has to be this times itself. So this has to be a perfect square, so does this, and it has to be a difference, or at least the pattern we've noticed so far has been a difference of two squares. Let's scroll down. And let's talk about uh, x squared minus 7. Can we use this pattern on x squared minus 7? Why not? Because what? Seven's not a perfect square. Uh, you said it's prime. That, that as well, even if we use, uh, say, eight. Okay, now it's not prime, but we still don't have that it's problem. Still not it's still not a perfect square. Um, is that really a problem? Is there a number that multiplies by itself to get eight? Yeah. What number is it? Seven. No, wait, no, 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 no. Uh, four times two. How many is eight? Sorry. Four plus itself. Does a number exist? Yeah. What's wrong with this number? Decimals of kind. Okay, so like if we were to write the factorization, it would be x plus some decimally number and x minus some decimally number. But they'd be exactly the same, right? Yeah. What what would be this, you know, what would this number be? How would we find this number? That would be a, that would be half of eight. What, what number are we looking for? What's it called? The square root of eight, right? Plus the square root of eight minus the square root of eight. Okay, so this is a little bit advanced actually, a little be advanced beyond this section particularly, but we'll run across it later. If we write it as square root of eight and square root of eight, that works too. Because the square root of eight, whatever it is, times itself will be eight. And we'll still get opposites, positive, and negative, right, exactly the same thing, they cancel each other out. So squares, we could view eight as a square, the square of the square root of eight. Okay, so here's another idea, another question. What about uh, x squared plus 25? So they're both squares, but it's a sum, it's not a difference. What about that? positive fives, is that the only way? Two negative fives? Oh yeah. We can use two positive fives or two negative fives, but we can't use the positive and negative that we need, but then they cancel each other out when we add. So we either get plus 10x or minus 10x, but either way it's not going to work out. We can't get 0x. So there is a difference of squares, difference of two squares, okay, that's why this post-it is yellow. It's yellow. It tells me to tell you about the difference of squares, because we didn't talk about it specifically, we didn't need to. Like you don't need to know it's called the difference of squares to calculate. You just need to recognize there's a zero in there. So now we're calling it what it is, calling it by its name, difference of two squares. But there is no nice way to factor a sum of two squares. Right? Obviously, a sum of two squares exists. We can add two squares together, but they don't factor. No way to factor it. It exists, we can write it, but we can't factor it. Okay, um, so those of you on the ends, I've uh, put stacks face down of the next one. Just grab those over there, flip to your left. <coughs> Pass those down. So Carol's doing some factoring. Carol factored this quadratic expression incorrectly. Uh, oh, Carl, not Carol, Carl. <laughs> I really think that's a car. A car. Carol. Weird way to pronounce that. Carl. The O And it's invisible. It's the other way around. It's invisible. You can't see it, but you hear it. It's, it's a joke. So, why did Carl choose 8 and 2? That's what I want you to write down. I want you to say it. I want you to write it. Involving as many different modes as possible. Did 
got a response to that via why did they choose the ACT? Because eight times two equals 16. Exactly. That's what we need out of our two numbers that we're looking for is for them to multiply to make 16. Okay. So very simply, because eight times two is 16, that's what we need. Why are eight and two the incorrect choice? Add to? Okay, we need 4 plus 4. Okay, so that's not going to work. x plus 4, x plus 4. That works because 4 times 4 is also 16, that's why we would choose those two. Uh, and we would uh, keep those two, I guess, because 4 plus 4 is also 16. I suppose it's also yellow. Something that gives this uh, situation a name. It's like um, I was going to say, um, also, instead of writing x plus 4 in parentheses twice, you could do x plus 4 in parentheses once, but then... Yeah, exactly. That's, square. that's why this has a special name. These happen to be identical factors that are multiplying together. When we multiply a number by it, it's an identical twin, right? It's copied. We call that a square. 4 times 4 is 4 squared. 7 times 7 is 7 squared. 10 times 10 is 10 squared, right? So x plus 4 times x plus 4 is x plus 4 squared. Because that happens, this has a special name, and it starts, the name starts with perfect square. Right? This thing's called a perfect square. Why is it called a perfect square? Because when you factor it, it's a perfect square. And the next part comes from what it is. Like a number can be a perfect square, lots of things can be a perfect square. This is a perfect square in the form of a tri. What's tri? What's domial? Three numbers. Number, number, number. A, a uh, quadratic or polynomial that has three terms, x squared plus 8x plus 16, or whatever three terms they are, it's called a trinomial. Uh, to drive it home, this is a trinomial, so what's this? A binomial, right? Two nomials. Two nomials. What's this, the guy right here? This one guy. Mono, mono, meaning one, right? Monotone, somebody who talks with one tone, they don't have any inflection whatsoever. Uh, Monotheistic, believe in one, one God. Mono, what, mono and stereo, stereo is both speakers, mono is just one speaker. Uh, so, if you can think of any other examples of mono, you can just throw them out there, those are the three I can think of. Mono and mono. Somebody brought that up. I think that might be right. I always thought it was man, man on man, like man and man fighting. Well, that's like, I've never that's looked it up. Mono, mono, yeah. mono is French for hand, so. Oh, hand on hand, maybe. Yeah. Hand to hand help combat. Yeah. That could be it, too. Uh, it depends on how it's spelled. Mono for mono, is, or for monomial is M O N O. I don't know. It's one of those things I've never seen written down, so I don't know. One on one. Uno on uno. Okay. Um, good, so that's called the perfect square trinomial. When will that happen? When will it factor just like that? Right here? Yeah. Your constant's a perfect square, okay? So, of course, you're going to have x squared, and at the end, we're going to have a perfect square, a number that you can square has a perfect square root. Okay. But then we're also going to take that number and add, add it together. So it's also, the middle number is also going to be an even. Right? And not only is it going to be even, it's going to be two times whatever the square root of that number is. Two B. B. Whatever B is. So here, this is four squared, and this is two times four. Can you think of another example? Go out to the end. What's the perfect square? Thirty-six. Thirty-six. So what would this guy be? Six. six. No, twelve. 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 Right? Because it'd be six plus six. Nice. There's another one. Perfect square trinomial. Maybe I'll put that one down.
uh, not be this corrected. Now remember, the answer that's going to come to me has to consider solution. The word solutions, remember we talked about it quite a few times, it means something specific. So when we say, why are the solutions incorrect? So why are her solutions incorrect? Okay. No, because she actually believes minus 12 equals zero. That's what she goes with. Or she well, okay. So um, to find the correct solution, she should have really set that equal to zero and then found that W is a positive 12. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That's how we would find the correct solution. But how do I know W can't be negative 12? I'm harping on the definition of solution. Negative 12 minus 12 is not zero. Yes, when you okay. Plug in, the whole thing on the one side comes out to zero. So that's saying that you know that this should be zero? Yeah. Okay, that's saying that's good enough, it's sound reasoning. But that means that, like, also saying we know something else. What's the solution? What are her solutions? What is she saying the solutions are? She's saying that W minus 12 is the solution and W minus 4 is the solution? Not too far off, not quite there though. What are her solutions? What are Judith, Judith's solutions? Her solutions were negative 12 or negative 4. Okay? So those are her solution. solutions on numbers, right? How do you know those numbers are not the correct solution? You mean, if I, you're saying I take negative 12 and do what with it? Which one? The original. The original, yes. If you put it back into the original equation and it comes out to be equal, you know you found a solution. But if it doesn't, then it's not. That's the definition of a solution. This is a solution if you plug it back in and the equation's true. Right? Yeah. Okay. So because if you uh, plug wouldn't come out to be zero. In fact, negative 12 squared would be positive. Negative 16 times negative 12 would also be positive, And 48 would be positive. There's no negatives to subtract it back to zero. It's never going to be zero. It's going to be a fairly large positive number. Same idea for negative 4. There's going to be no negatives left. So how do you know a solution when you see one? solution means. So uh, plug it in and see if the equation is true. And then Daniel pointed out to us, if you want to find the correct solution, what you should have done is set this equal to zero and then solve that equation. Very common mistake, one of the most common mistakes, just saying this is the solution and this is the solution. Okay? It makes it very clear that you do not understand that this needs to be zero and this needs to be zero. I shouldn't say and, I should say this needs to be zero or this needs to be zero. They can't both be zero sometimes.
think this question is worded okay. Um, it's kind of a hard question to ask. Got into a bit of a scuffle in the previous class. Got mono a mono for the second. Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, Gordon. 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 By being incorrect, the, the, the point that Gordon had was, was that this equation is as true as this equation is. They're both, they're both true. It's not, a, it's not a false statement here. All we've done is factor the left side, which means it's the same. The thing is that it leads to a faulty conclusion in this step. It leads to a, a false statement in the next step. I guess I should say, why was why was Daryl wrong to set r equal to eighty and r plus two equal to eighty? Maybe that's what I should say. Right? That's how it's not true. Um, I'll change it for tomorrow. Why is that? Why why can you not set r equal to eighty? I mean that's kind of what we do in the other example, isn't it? Uh, we just talked about this, set that equal to zero, right? That's what's over here on the right side, set it equal to zero, it's a big deal. If we set it equal to 80, it says zero. Can anyone express why setting that equal to, r equal to 80? Well, factoring this thing is worth enough to keep it zero. Yes, yes, why is that? Um, because uh, the point of factoring is so that Well, it's quadratic from the start. Quadratic means we have yeah. squares. But to get it down into the, the r factor plus form. whatever is equal to r plus whatever. Or times, sorry. Time. To, to have it um, be something times something. Okay. If you can't do that, then you put one to the other zero. Well, you just did it, right? It's r times. It's like r plus well, zero. It's a lot more complex. And it's a lot harder and easier than that. I think you're right. I think it's tough maybe to express it. Right? Yeah. Well, he got to this step, similar to Daryl, getting to this step, getting equal to zero, and then setting each factor equal to zero. Or sorry, Judith. Daryl. Judith doing this. And uh, this what's that? This person is Daryl. <laughs> Daryl <laughs> sets r equal to 80 and r plus 2 equal to 80. And that looks a lot like what you do in other equations when you're setting equal to zero. Why can't you set each thing equal to 80? Let's do that. Yeah? R times, uh, what's in the parentheses, R plus 2 is equal to 80, not the second thing. Well, can't they just say that about this one too? But isn't it because, like, unless you're multiplying by zero, then what's your uh, I know what I want to say. When, unless if you're multiplying by zero, it's not going to affect the final number. Like, the number will still be the same as you're multiplying by zero. Right? It'll be the same? So, like, zero is not going to affect 12 in any way unless you're multiplying it. Because it's not like, 12, it's not like zero is going to make 12 go up or down. But if you set it equal to 80, then it's going to change it. Okay. Um, I think you've got what's happening now. You're talking about multiplying by zero, right? Oh well, yeah, but I guess the only time it's going to affect it is the only time it's going to change the outcome. Are you talking about right here? Are you talking about this? Yeah, just in our case. So you're not talking about up here?
like if you try to you know if you play one of those features that says like on the far by eighty, like you do like the zero. Uh -huh. It doesn't work because if you like because anything times zero is zero, but anything times eighty isn't eighty. Ah, mm. yeah. See what she's saying? Zero, if you use it in multiplication, you get a zero when you multiply. If you add by zero, you get the original. The important thing is, is the multiplying by zero. So uh, Keenan and, and Jade uh, joining forces to, to inform us. It's If you multiply by zero, then you always will get zero. But if you multiply by 80, that doesn't mean you're going to get 80. You're going to get a bigger number. Yeah, un unless this is one, then you could get 80. But you won't guarantee, you're not guaranteed to get 80. No. But you are guaranteed, if you multiply by zero, to get zero. That's why we said it equals zero. Because there's a guarantee there. You guarantee that if I multiply two numbers together, this one by this one, and I got zero, it had to be that one of them was zero. Not both of them at the same time necessarily, but this one or this one has to be zero. But that's not the same here. There's no guarantee that one of these is 80. In fact, it would be really unlikely that one of them would be 80. Because if this was 80, well, R is 80, so R would also have to be 80. Because it would be 80 times 82, that's not going to be 80. And if R plus 2 is 80, then um, this would be 78. 78 times 80 is going to be 80, right? Uh, so that's, it just doesn't work out. So it's about that guarantee, right? that absolute truth that if you multiply two numbers to get zero, then you must have multiplied by zero. One of them had to be zero. Okay, so um, because there is no guarantee, I don't know how to spell guarantee, guys, so I'm just being as honest as I can. I always spell this wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> how do you spell yeah. guarantee? <laughs> is it A? It's A, isn't it? Is it G-U? Because there is an absolute guarantee that if you multiply numbers to get to, together and get zero, 
that what what's he guarantee? What's he guarantee? What? He must have multiplied by zero. Here's something you multiply by. So you must have multiplied by zero, right? This must have been zero. Oh, that wasn't zero? The only other way that this could have happened is that this was zero. If one of those didn't happen, you didn't get zero. Okay? Only way to get zero. So r must have been negative 10 to make this zero, or r must have been positive 8 to make this zero. And if you go back here and plug it in, you're going to there too. So, so clever. Whoever thought of that, I'm sure they were really excited when they thought of that. If you plug in the r to stuff like that, will we still find r? Absolutely. That's, that's what we figured out. That's the clever part about it. We start out with an issue where we start out with an equation where we ask ourselves, what number times itself plus two times the same number is going to give me 80? That's a really hard question to answer, right? So the cleverness of it is let's subtract 80 from both sides. Now this side will be 0. We'll do this thing called factoring. Take this as one uh, binomial times another binomial. So it's equivalent. And then we use a zero product property saying that I can conclude absolutely that one of these has to be zero, and now we solve these really easy linear equations rather than this really crazy quadratic equation. So, yes, this is equal to that, right? The factor form is equal to that. And if I multiply these together to get zero, then this would have to be zero, or this would have to be zero, and now we have some linear equations, some really easy equations to solve. And if we take them back in here, we got uh, negative 10, okay? So that's going to be. 100, right? 100, negative 10. Now, my, uh, plus a negative 10 times 2. Negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. 100 minus 20 is 80. But the, I don't know, up there in the thing, it said in the parentheses and stuff, you said it r plus 10. And then uh, r at the end is negative 8. So does that, does that mean they switched? What do you mean switch? Right there in the parentheses in the green. Yes. It says r plus 10. Yeah. And then r is negative 8. Well, then how at the bottom you get that r equals negative 10 and then r equals 8? Okay, so it's, it's either or, right? R is not going to be two different things at the same time. That's one thing. Yeah. Okay, so what we're saying is right here at this step, that this parentheses times this parentheses is going to have to equal 0, mm -hmm. right? Because this is equivalent to that. Yeah. And we can conclude that this is true from this. We subtract 80 from both sides to get this one. Yeah. Okay, so if we multiply these two together and get 0, that means... Right? Forget about this stuff. If we multiply one number times another and get zero. Mm -hmm. If we multiply one number times the other number, one of them's got to be negative. One of them's got to be negative? Well, it's a little bit of subtract to get back to zero. But we multiplied to get to zero. We didn't add to get to zero. Oh. Right? We got this number times this number. Just two numbers. Yeah. Multiply together to make zero. If we didn't look at this at all, if we, if we covered this up and I and I had this little box right here and I just said, hey, I just I looked in here. Two numbers multiplied together and the result was zero. I can't tell you a whole lot about that situation. I can't tell you what those numbers absolutely were, but I can tell you that one of them was zero. Zero, absolutely. So this number or this number have to be equal to zero. Well, for this parentheses, what's in this parentheses to be equal to zero, r would have to be negative 10. Oh, no. The last one. That's like the last one. So Carol did her work correctly. I don't care. I don't care.
but no one else may look at him. You may look at your papers and take notes. Oh, that's a cool sentence. question I'll be a little challenging because uh, just like with the other yellow cookies on the previous slide, um, some kind of new information, but not information you needed to do the work. Okay? Now we're just going to kind of talk about it and name it. Um, so what is it about this problem that uh, told Carol that Y needed to be changed to a new letter? Because that's the easiest way to define both your axes. To find both your x's, absolutely. If the other side is zero, that's the easiest way to, that would be the easiest equation to solve, right? So it's equal to zero, and then it's possible to factor, um, which isn't always true. But if you could factor it, it's set equal to zero, set each one equal to zero. Right. Um, so that's more like good news for Carol, that y was supposed to be zero. But how did she know that it was supposed to be? Um, well, it could have been equal to something else like maybe 80, and then maybe when you subtract 80 from both sides, you get like negative 110, and maybe that would work. Um, so how do you know? How do we know it was? It had to be zero, and maybe not that y was 80. Property that you multiply two numbers together, two things together and get zero, one of them had to be zero. I also reiterate function, what a function is, okay? And the value of a function, and all this stuff about functions. So let's review again what is a function? Plug in numbers, input and output. Input and output, right? With a little bit of a caveat on that, that for every input, there's only one output. For every input, there's exactly one output, meaning not zero outputs and not two outputs or three or four, but exactly one. Okay. But the thing that we want to concentrate on is that there's input and output. Okay. The, the value of a function, the worth of a function, the purpose of a function is to get outputs. That you can put stuff into it is not a unique fact, a unique uh, property of, a, of that function. Lots of functions take numbers in. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, you don't need to function. The things that make Functions different is how they handle those inputs and what they put out, okay? So the zero of a function, zero of a function is what you put in to get out zero, right? Um, so the zero of a function is when a function is zero. And a function is its output. That is what a function is. So when a function is zero, uh, the process for, for finding the zeros would be actually the numbers that cause you to get zero. Does that make sense? So the function is zero, which means y is zero, the output is zero. What did it take to make that happen? Now that's not a really different problem from all the other problems we've done. It's always, you know, set equal to zero, factor the thing, set each factor equal to zero, solve the linear equation. Um, just that little piece uh, was a, a little bit extra. So. If you came along those problems in the homework and you saw zeros in the function, I'm not sure what that means. I don't, I don't blame you, because uh, we didn't talk about it explicitly. Um, but it wouldn't have been too hard to figure out, like, this function is equal to zero, and that solves the, the same thing. 
So the directions tell me that. realize it. If you do, that's great, but I'm bringing up a point that I've gone over many times before. Once again, I'm just drive it home. So um, why did Carol set each of her factors equal to zero? I think you're going to write that down if you didn't take a second to write that down yet. Well, she's not putting zeros in for x. She's, she's putting zero in for this whole thing, right? Okay. She's making that whole thing equal to zero. Why can she say that? Why can she just take that factor and set it equal to zero? Because um, it won't because it won't make it guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. Is it not guaranteed or it is guaranteed? Well, if you put in zero, then it is guaranteed that your <coughs> that your answer is going to equal to zero. That's it. Yeah. If you put zero in here, it's guaranteed you'll get zero. Okay. And I'd say that's like that's half it, right? There's um, if this then that, right? If this thing happens, then this thing happens. If it rains, the ground gets wet, okay? But does it work the other way? If the ground is wet, does that mean that it did rain? No. Maybe no. Maybe the sprinklers are off, right? But if it rains, it will. The ground will get wet, provided there's nothing covering the ground, okay? Well, okay. So if it rains, the ground will get wet. If this is zero, you will get zero. Does the implication go the other way? Sometimes it does. If you get zero, does that mean this had to be zero? No. Okay, so this has to be zero or this has to be zero. So that includes everything. So that's guaranteed, right? If this is zero or this is zero, I'll get zero. If I got zero, then this is zero or this is zero. The implication goes the other way too. So that's why. Because she got zero, and she knows that this would have to be zero or, or this would have to be zero. So x is negative 10 or x is 3. Why? It's called the zero product property. I'll state it for you now as, as short and concise as I possibly can. A, B equals zero. If that happens, if A times B equals zero, then A equals zero or B equals zero. And maybe they're both zero, but they don't have to. Okay, are there any questions from this quiz at all or from any part of the homework? Oh, no, 65 on the homework. 65 on the homework. Okay, we've got a skate park. It's a rectangle. Anytime shapes are mentioned, Anytime shapes are mentioned, I would say draw those shapes. Okay, so draw a rectangle. And what does this rectangle, rectangle represent?
Leg times are width, 100 times 50, so add two zeros, 5,000 oh. square feet. Okay, yeah. So let's just talk about uh, what you said, Keenan. If you triple the two sides, what's that mean? Is, it, is that going to triple the area? If you make each side three times longer, it seems like it's good. If you think about it, you're saying no, and I Right? So that's a hundred, and that's another hundred. So now the new one would be this big. So how much more area would that be? More than three. Well, this is a hundred by fifty, isn't it? And so is this. So is this, so is this, and this, and this, and this. We got nine skate parks now. Nine times as big. We nine tuples or something. <laughs> okay, so let's back it up. Just multiply each side by three, we can see. When we multiplied each side by three, and we got nine times the area. Right? Three times three. It's not a mistake. If we did four and four, 16 times the area. Okay. But they want to triple the area, which means they want the area to be how much? 15, right? The old one's 5,000, so the new one would be 15,000. Old's 5,000. We then want the new one to be 15,000. You see how I haven't read the whole problem, but I have a lot of information written down drawn in the picture, uh, even eliminated ideas, multiplying each side by three, um, triple the area. Um, and how are they going to do that? By, I mean, they, they could do it by making it into a circle instead of a rectangle. They could do, uh, you know, just add a bunch of concrete this direction or a bunch this way. But what they're going to do is add the same distance x to the length and the width. Okay, so here's the length. They're going to add some more up. X more. Well, over here, they're going to add X more as well. They're going to add the same amount to both sides. They're going to push out both the, the length and the width by the same amount. Which means the new skate park is going to look stuff like this. So I don't love this example, but it does create a quadratic equation that we can solve. That, that is the point of it. And I want to see if you can translate words into equations. Um, so it makes me laugh, but at the same time, you know, it, it is a, a real, real world representation of, of things we're doing. Anyway, let's see. So write and solve an equation to find the value of x. So once we find x, we, have, we won't actually know the dimensions. We'll have to add all these out. Okay. So we want to get 15,000 square feet. 
So how, are you, how do we get that 15,000 square feet? How do we get the area of the new skate park? How do we find the area of the old skate park, Tyler? Uh, length times width. Length times width. Is it any different for the new skate park? Length um, times width? Just the length and width is going to be longer. Length and width are going to be longer. Well, we just, to find the area of a rectangle, we'll just do length times width, right? Yeah. So what's this length, or width, or whatever you want to call this? What's that? 50 plus x. 50, 50, 0, plus x. That's the length, or the, the measure of the, say, the width. We're going to multiply that by the length. How long is the length? 100 plus x. When we multiply those two together, we get 15,000. Does that look kind of familiar? Mm -hmm. Just sort of like two quadratic factors, two linear factors that multiply another quadratic. All right? Equals 15,000. Is that going to work? And I said this equals 15,000, this equals 15,000, it's all correct. So I hope everyone says no. No. We just, no, that doesn't work. Can we change? 15,000 into a zero. Gotta change it to zero. How can we get the side to be zero? Subtract 15,000. Subtract 15,000. Okay, so now we've got 50 plus x times 100 plus x minus 15,000 equals zero. That's good. The other side is zero. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, at this stage, when we have it equal to zero, we usually have like this quadratic expression of an x squared and an x term and a constant, and we factor it. But this doesn't work. Like we can't set this equal to zero and this equal to zero because we're also subtracting fifteen thousand. If we have this be zero and subtract fifteen thousand, we get negative fifteen thousand. So that that didn't work out. So what do we need to do? How are we going to get this to be factored? Yeah. Distribute this to that. Get that result. Subtract fifteen thousand from the constant and start again. Okay. So you get x squared uh, plus one hundred and fifty x. Doing this quickly. Plus five thousand. 100 times 55,000 minus 15,000 equals zero. So then you just do 5,000 minus 15,000. Squared plus 150x minus 10,000. Now we just have a new equation that we need to, or a new uh, expression that we need to factor. Numbers are big, but they're not unmanageable. X and X. So the multiply make negative 10,000 and add to 100. So either x plus 200 was equal to 0, or x minus 50 has to be 0. No other possibilities. So x is either negative 200, or x equals 50. What does x represent? The length that we're adding times 10,000. Right. So does one of these make more sense than the other? Which? 50, because we take away 200 and add it. Yeah. To take away 200, we have to like get bulldozers and dig this up and actually go this direction, 200, and go that direction, 200, and then winds up, is our skate park's over there now? That's just weird. Why don't we just add 50 to both sides? So negative 200, not making a lot of sense. So the context is the problem. 50 we like. You like 50 if you're the, the owner of the skate park, and negative 200 you like if you're the contractor. That sounds good. I'd like to tear that up. Okay, any other questions? Can I pass it over, please?
factor this just like we were factoring things before. But how is this different from the other things we've been factoring? 7x squared. 7x squared. What has it been before? So what number was multiplied by x squared? In the previous oh, one. 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 One times x squared. Now we have a times x squared, right, where a is not 1. Okay. How do we factor it? Here's three ideas that I see most often. Okay, we see that we have a 7. So true to form as before, right? Like we had an x, so we put an x and an x. So 7x and 7x. Okay, so there's, there's one idea to start us off. Here's another one. Uh, that has this. And then we're going to find those other two numbers that we need. And here's another one. So let's go through each of them. What do you think? Is this going to work or not work? No. Why not? 49 x squared, not 7 x squared. We have to do the 7 times the 7. So that's not going to work. How about this one? Not as obvious. Why not? Okay, so Connor kind of uh, put really specific words to it. In the end, what we're going to wind up doing really is multiplying these together, let's say, and getting a quadratic. And then you have to multiply that by 7. But what you have to get is this. Uh, and, okay, you could get an x squared times 7 to be 7x squared, but what are you going to multiply by 7 by to get negative 20? Something weird. And to get 3, also something weird. Okay? So, no, we don't like that unless we want to make a really difficult problem. So probably this one, right? 7x times x will give you 7x squared. And leave this open to find the numbers. So let's go to the end, the constant. Um, do we still want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 3? Is that still true? Yeah. Yeah, the, we're going to multiply this together, right? Maybe plus or minus, we're not sure yet. But we are going to multiply this number times this number and get a number. And we're not going to combine it with any other numbers. That's the only time we'll get a number when we multiply those together. It's tricky. We're going to get a number times a number. So we do want to get negative 3. Um, but here's the problem. We can put um, 3 and negative 1. Why not? Because it won't go in. What doesn't? How, do we, how are we supposed to get that negative 20? Is it 3 minus 1? Let's talk about that first. Do we just do 3 minus 1 to get 20? No. Why not? That's what it used to be, right? We used to add these numbers to get the middle number? Yeah. But now we're going to get 20 to find x divided by Basically multiplying it by 7x now, and multiplying 1 by 2 by 7x. Right. So whatever one's like over here in this other place, it has to get multiplied by 7. So it's not as easy as just saying they multiply to negative 3 and add to negative 4. So there's that to consider. So in this one, it turns out not to be correct. Here's what we're faced with. Either this could be a positive 3 and this a negative 1, or this a negative 3 and this a positive 1, or this a positive 1 and this a negative 3, or this a negative 1 and a positive 3. Four different possibilities with the positive and negative. And each of these is going to be different. Do you agree? In this scenario, negative 1 will get multiplied by 7, and this 1 will get multiplied by 7, this one negative 3 will get multiplied by 7, 3 will get multiplied by 7. They're all going to be different. Okay. These two are going to return something really similar, and these will return something very similar, but they'll all be unique. They'll all be different. So we're left without any other ideas. Just keep trying it until it works. Right? Try this one, no, that didn't try that one, try that one, try that one. If we're really unlucky, we'll have to do this four times. really lucky, but on average, if you do lots of these, you're not going to be lucky every time. And you can, you can apply some thought to it before you try it, but really you're just going to be guessing really, like guessing and checking really quickly in your head. You don't know what it needs to do, you just have to do it and see if it works. Okay, so let's just give it a try. We'll put 3 and negative 1 there. Well, we get 3x and negative 7x. That's not negative 20. So we'll just change the signs because the numbers are already written there. So 
or a negative 3 positive 1. Well, I get the positive 7x and negative 3x. It's similar, but it's, it's different, right? Instead of negative 4x, you get positive 4x. So that's one thing. Like, if, if you didn't get the right number, like you didn't get 20, switching the signs isn't going to make it negative 20. Only if you get positive 20, switching the signs will make it negative 20. So that's one thing that makes the guesses, you know, you can take fewer guesses. You don't get the right number, right? Just without talking about the sign, if you don't get the right number, then switching the signs is not going to give you the right number. It's, it's going to change just the sign of the, the middle term. So that didn't work, and that didn't work. So now let's try 1 and negative 3. We get 1x and negative 21x. Um, we add those to get negative 21 plus 1 is negative 21x. So that one turns out to be correct. 7x squared. Uh, minus 20x minus 3. But doing that with right there, you're just doing boil. Or a boil, I guess. So only distributive uh, boil. <laughs> using distributive, distributive property, right? And, 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 you know, if you use boil, yeah, that'll work. But I'm trying to steer us away from boil. Yeah, boil. Distributive. distributive property. So we're distributing this over to here uh, to each of these. Numbers and yeah, that's what we get when we do that. Okay. <laughs> well, like we said, if we're now we've got some information, we we might be able to get away with uh, like two guesses at the most, right? Because if we try one and it's not the right number, like it's uh, four. This one's just going to be negative four, right? Or or vice versa. Okay, so if I try one, I just get four log. Switching the signs isn't going to change that. So I'll just move on to one of the other ones where we actually have different numbers. And if I tried this one, I would have got positive 20. I know switching the signs would be negative 20. So if I tried uh, this one and it wasn't the right number, I would just, that would be one guess. And then I move to the next guess. If it's right, it's right. If it's not, I know the other one's right. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that was a really choice situation to be in. There is only one way to factor seven. What if there was six? There's six and one, and there's two and three. Right? There's two ways to factor it. What if there was something that had more factorization? Uh, if we come over here, three, there's only one way to factor three. But because it was negative, it made four different scenarios. We had to try four of them. Um, so that's four different guesses in, a, in an easy situation. What about a situation like this? So let's just start with this first term. We know we're going to have to multiply two x terms together to get 15x squared. So that could look um, like 15x and x. That gives us 15x squared. But it could also look like 3x times 5x. And then lucky for us, there's only two ways to factor 15. Either 2 times 1 or 2 times 5. Then we go over to negative 8. Factor of negative eight. Negative four. Two and negative four, which means uh, negative two and four. And another one. How about another way? Just like any way to factor eight. How about one and eight? Any way to factor eight? Yeah. One and eight. Negative one and eight. Yeah. Any way to factor eight, but with one positive and one negative. Oh, but yeah. we forgot about this. This could be negative four and this two, or this four and this negative two. Right. 
Because if we switch the parentheses that are in, that makes a different, oh no, it makes it different. We multiply it all the way out, it makes it different. And those numbers right there, they can uh, also work on those ones too. Yeah, that's the thing. We have to come over here and do the same thing. Uh, here we can do uh, 1 and negative 8, negative 1 and positive 8, uh, 8 and negative 1, or negative 8 and positive 1. When we switch the numbers or we switch the signs, that makes a different quadratic because this a different number is getting multiplied by 15. Same word over here. If none of those work, which was eight guesses, we have to start in on this. We have to do the same exact thing for this set of parentheses. If we're really, really unlucky, how many times? Two different ways to factor 15, uh, eight different ways to factor negative eight, but we're in for a long haul if we happen to be guessing incorrectly. Now again, we could if if using two and negative four doesn't give us say two or negative two, we know that any combination of two here and four there is going to work. So negative two and four, that's just going to make it the opposite, right? Okay, so if we try those and it didn't work, we can move on to these guys. If this didn't work, we know that's not going to work. If this doesn't give us the right number, it's the opposite of what we're looking for. We know switching the signs isn't going to do anything for us. Move on. But it's still a lot. It's still a lot of guessing. And that's just two ways to factor the first uh, number and two ways to factor the other number. But then we won't get to that yet. Right. So what I want to show you, unfortunately, very quickly, um, is a way that you can factor these the same way every time without guessing. It's the same amount of guessing and checking we were doing in the previous section where we find two numbers that multiply to one number and add to another. All right, so let's let's do this with this with this example. And I'll show you how it works. Okay. So I call this the A C. Factoring this kind of a quadratic, where we have a number in front of x squared, a number in front of x, and a number in front of two, where this is not one. Call it the AC method because this is here's what we do. Um, this is a the number that is multiplied by x squared, and this is c the constant. Right, so up here we're going to write a times c whatever a times c is. What's a? And what's c? What's 15 times negative 8? Negative 120. All right? So that's, that's why it's called the ac method, because we're always going to multiply a times c. Okay? Down here, this is easy. We're just going to write b. What's b? Okay. So here's the, the guessing and checking part, but it doesn't really take Two numbers that multiply to make a negative 120, but add to make negative 2. What's that? 12 and 10? 12 and 10. 12, 10, we need a negative 12. So we've engineered these numbers to multiply to negative 120 and add to negative 2. Okay? So we might be able to see this has all the factors of 8 to 15. All the factors multiplied together into one big number. Right. And they add to make negative 2. So these guys, are, they also have factors of 15 and of 8. Right? So it's just kind of like split differently. So what we're going to do is, uh, is this could be written as negative 2x, or it could be written as negative 12x plus 10x. That's what we're going to do. We're going to write it as 15x squared minus 12x plus 10x minus 8. So all this work that we did was just to find how to split up negative 2x. Just right. And it really it won't matter if we do negative 12x plus 10x or 10x minus 12x. It'll all work out. And what we're going to do now is called factor by grouping. We're just going to group them. Group of 2 and the other group. Uh, okay, I'll keep going. So
So look at this guy here, this two group, this group of two. Can we factor some, do they have a common factor among them? Three. Three, three and also x, go ahead. How about three and x? So if I write five x minus four, distribute, comes up with the same thing. Just 4.4. Okay, agreed, if I distribute the 3x, we get the same as that. Okay, do the same thing the other group. What does it have in common? Mm -hmm. Two, just two. So we get five x minus four. What do you notice? The same. It's got the same thing. Okay, so here is a number and here is a number. They're factors because they're multiplied. This is a factor and this is a factor. Well, they have the same factor. Just like these had a factor of three and x and we factored it out. We can factor out this 5x minus 4. 5x minus 4. Which leaves, if we divide this by 5x minus 4, we're left with 3x. Divide this by 5x minus 4, we get 2. And we're done. Back. Okay? If you want to see that again, I also have the, the tutorial videos, not just lecture videos. And we'll that more slow.